The Republican Party is waging a war on women, and this week's decision by the Florida Supreme Court is just another catastrophic reminder of how they will stop at nothing to impose their minority views on a majority of the country. On May 1st, when the six-week abortion ban goes into effect, the women and girls of Florida will become part of a Southern reproductive health care desert. And according to The Washington Post, the closest clinic where abortion will be legal after the six-week mark for, for someone living in Florida's southernmost tip will be a 14-hour drive to Charlotte. For patients whose pregnancies have progressed beyond 12 weeks, the point at which North Carolina bans abortion, they will have to drive 17 hours to Southern Virginia. Let me repeat that for those in the back. If you're a woman in Florida who cannot afford to take a leave of absence or get on a plane and is bleeding out because you're suffering a miscarriage, the closest place where you can get legal health care might be at least 14 hours away. A Florida woman who nearly died after she was denied an abortion under the existing 15-week ban told The Post that women in Florida should, and I quote, run because you have no help here. The law is Pretty draconian and allows abortions for rape and incest up until 15 weeks, as long as you can prove rape or incest happened, which is kind of hard if, um, let's say, your father is the one raping you. They also include a ban on providing abortion pills through telemedicine care. All is not lost, though, because Florida women will have a chance to fight back with the ballot measure in November that would allow abortion up until viability. But that, too, could be in danger if they choose to vote for Donald Trump who could very well and is promising to impose a national abortion ban. Joining me now is Florida State Representative Anna Escamani. Um, great to see you, Representative Escamani. Uh, your governor, uh, Ron DeSantis, has said that he does not believe that this measure to approve uh, abortion in the Constitution will pass. He says that that and also the amendment for recreational marijuana will fail. He says they're both extreme and radical, and there is not a 60 percent threshold for either. Your thoughts? Well, it's great to see you, Joy. And I wouldn't ask Governor Ron DeSantis to make predictions, um, as he is a loser <laughs> himself and he does not know what winning looks like. And to be clear, we will achieve 60 percent on reproductive rights. And in fact, here in the Sunshine State, much like around the country, poll after poll tells us across party lines that support for reproductive freedom and support to remove political interference is successful. It is a winning issue. And I feel very confident after collecting more than a million verified signatures for this ballot issue to become reality, with 35 percent of those being signed by Republicans, that we will be mm -hmm. able to codify abortion here in the Sunshine State. I just want uh, my viewers to listen to the way that conservative men talk about women, because this is like a, a factor in this. It's the way they think about women. Here are just a, a handful of them. Charlie Kirk, uh, a guy named Pastor Joel Webon, and a guy named Joshua Haynes. Take a listen to them. The Roe v. Wade issue is an issue, issue that we should win. It was sent back to the states. The states are going to really dominate. Birth control, like, really screws up female brains, by the way. Every single one of you need to make sure that your loved ones are not on birth control. It increases depression, anxiety, suicidal ideation. It creates very angry and bitter young ladies and young women. Will women have the right to vote tomorrow if you wave that magic Christian wand? No. Okay, why not? That, and uh, that, I want to get into why not. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, because if we had a Christian nation tomorrow and women did have the right to vote, we would not have a Christian nation within 50 years. <laughs> it's like a beta male convention. I just wanted to show it, show that, because to let people understand where this is going. Uh, Representative Escamani, you laugh, but what, since I've been in high school, people on the right have been saying birth control is an abortifacient or is human pesticide, it should be illegal. They do not believe women should have the right to vote because they believe if you took the right to vote away from women, they could have their, their magic white Christian ethno state. And they do believe that women should be punished for getting abortions. They're in Texas mm -hmm. right now meeting with a group that says women should go to prison or get the death penalty. This is the end game. It's the handmaid's tale. Do Florida voters, are they being told that? Do they understand that? So to your point, Joy, it would be funny if it wasn't so scary because yes. this is a reflection of, uh, of the extremism that got us where we are today. You know, Governor DeSantis signed a deeply unpopular six-week abortion ban because he was trying to appeal to that base uh, for his presidential ambitions. I, I do feel like Floridians understand what's at stake here. And as a six-week ban goes into effect and we see 
women and abortion seekers having to travel, as you noted earlier, as far as North Carolina and Virginia to access care, it will be a reality check for many who maybe did not know that Florida has a 24 hour mandatory delay, that Florida mm -hmm. has forced ultrasound requirements, state mandated counseling, and yes, now a six week abortion ban with very narrow exceptions that will lead to people dying. And 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 I and I, I know that's going to motivate people to understand how important this election is. Hey, you know, understand the telemedicine ban means that you can't do a, a self-medicated abortion with mifepristone. It's a sneaky way to stop you from using mifepristone because without telemedicine, no one can like send you mifepristone. Uh, and I, I guess the last question is: Do you think, as a Democrat in a state that has had a rough, a rough go in its Democratic Party, does this end up impacting even the Rick Scott reelect? Because he's for a national abortion ban too. I think it will. I mean, Governor Rick Scott, his first year in office, signed five anti-abortion bills into law and hosted a party to celebrate it. And so we need to do our part as Democrats to remind voters of the extremism and how Republicans are even yeah. out of touch with their own base. And I feel confident we'll get that done. Put that map up, please, as we leave. Uh, this is the map. This is The Handmaid's Tale. These women, they've built the wall, guys. They've built the wall and trapped women in the South where they have no rights over their own body. State Representative Anna Escamani, thank you. And that is tonight's readout. All of with Chris A starts now.